Good evening, friends. Welcome once again to my channel on YouTube. Um, today's message I have titled, Unprecedented Times, A Time Like No Other. The Bible verse that I'm going to read today comes from Matthew 24, 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. The encouraging word for today. I so often hear the phrase unprecedented times spoken by so many people that really have no idea just how unprecedented these days in which we live really are. Unprecedented means having no precedent, it's novel, or it's unexplained. When you take the meaning of the word out of the dictionary, it describes it as unexplained. To the scientific mind, the things that are taking place in our world today are unexplained. But when you read and understand the word of God that was written and inspired by God himself, Everything that is going on is explained somewhere in the scriptures. The biggest issue is that people will trust in a scientist before they will trust in the word of God. And that is where our world is headed at this point. 1 Timothy 4.1 explains this very clear. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The seducing spirits are the teachings by those who do not take the word of God seriously and try to explain it away in a way that they can understand. God's word is very clearly understood by those that believe and trust that the Bible is a true and inerrant word of God. Those that do not believe which is a high percentage of the world population, have no idea what is coming. We read this truth in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world, which is Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So basically what this is saying is, if you're not a believer, God has given Satan the power to blind you. So the only way you're going to really know the truth is when you turn to Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit and ask him to indwell in you. There's no other way. Don't read the Bible and think you can understand it without receiving Jesus Christ first because it, it don't work that way. They are those that have chosen to reject the truth, so God has given Satan the power to blind them that have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, like I had just mentioned. Based on my 25 years of study on the topic of end times, I believe we are in the last stages of seeing all end time prophecy being fulfilled. But with that being said, I personally have no fear of what is ahead. And if you truly love and believe in Jesus Christ, you have no fear either. Let me explain. The general population sees everything as if the world is falling apart. The born-again Christian sees all the prophecies of the Bible as falling into place. There's a big difference. The world may seem like it's falling apart to those that don't know what's really coming and why it's coming, but those that know Jesus Christ and no prophecy, it's just falling into place, just like pieces of a puzzle. And believe me, uh, the puzzle's almost finished. What Satan is using for evil, God is turning around and using for good. Satan, in and of himself, has absolutely no power. His power comes from God. He can do nothing without God's approval. Let me explain this also in a way that should be able to be understood. First, let me give you an example of what I am trying to get across. When we were little children, we always felt safe because we knew that our parents were close by. 
As long as things were going well, we felt safe. But as soon as things got out of hand, or we were in some kind of trouble, what did we do? We would run to mom and dad for safety and comfort. Think about when you were young. When did you need your dad the most? It was when you were in trouble or hurt. You see where I'm going with this? Now think about how we as adults are. When things are going well, we just go about our everyday business as if we are in control and we don't need anybody, right? I mean, everything's great. But as soon as tragedy or illness comes into our lives, where do we turn? This is where it gets really interesting. Because even if you are not necessarily religious or a church-going person, you turn to the God that you never really thought existed nor really cared about in the first place. Sometimes the only way God can get our attention is by allowing trials and tribulation into our life. My friends, this is what is taking place in our world today. Our world is so out of control with how it has fallen away from a true word of God. God is allowing all the evil that has come upon the world's populations so that the only way out is to turn to him for safety and comfort. He is opening his arms to receive whoever will come to him, but for those that do not repent and turn to him, they will enter into a time like no other as it is described in the following Bible verse. Jeremiah 37 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. This Bible verse is a warning from God to Israel to prepare them for the time of tribulation that will also serve the purpose of bringing Israel to their knees, where their only hope is a turn to the God that they have forsaken for the last 2,000 years. I do believe that this is God's last call to a perishing world. America is long overdue for judgment, and there's only one explanation why God hasn't judged America yet. We find this reason in 2 Peter 3.9, and I read this verse quite often, actually. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is so loving that he has given us chance after chance to turn to him. But one day soon, that will end and all will be lost for those who rejected his son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. Everybody has a choice to make. You could take this serious or you can blow it off like most people will do. Let me tell you what my greatest hope is. When I stand before the Lord, I want to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. I want Jesus Christ to allow me to see how many people came to the saving grace of salvation by way of these messages that I am putting out for you to read. I hope I see everybody there who is reading these messages. That is my main focus for doing this ministry. Remember, this message and all messages that I write come from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They are not my words. I'm not that good. I'm just a vessel in which God uses to share his truth. Once again, believe what you will. You will eventually be held accountable for whatever you accept as truth. The only way for you to know for sure is for you to personally reach out to Jesus Christ and let him guide you through each and every waking day. Get into the scriptures and listen to what he has to say. He will speak to you if you are serious. His word promises in John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Jesus Christ has an open invitation for all who will receive him. He will not force your hand because he wants true love and not a bunch of robots. 
He could have programmed us all to obey his every command, but then there would be no such thing as love in our whole universe. Would you rather have people love you or fear you? If people fear you, they may also hate you, and that is what Satan wants. If people love you, you can be sure that they will not bring you any harm if it is indeed true love. Think about this. Islam brings people to their religion through fear and hate. In other words, convert or be killed according to the Quran. Read it if you don't believe me. Christianity says, believe and be saved. Do you want to be run by fear or love? This is exactly what is happening in our world today. All the lying propaganda that we hear on the mainstream media are all lies to bring us to fear so they can have an easier time bringing us into the one world system, which is their ultimate agenda. We still have time to stop this, but it is up to us to get on our knees and pray for a national revival. Let me share this verse with you so that you know what I just said is true. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive them their sins and heal their land. What a great promise. He is speaking to the born-again believers, not the general public. So if we, as born-again believers, get on our knees and pray to God, he said he will hear our prayers and heal our land. My friends, our near future is in our hands. God cannot and will not lie. So if he says something, you can be sure that he will do it. So don't assume that everything will be fine in our world because it won't if we don't bring God back into our country. We are sitting on borrowed time here in America. God is patient, but his patience will not last forever. One more thing, God has always given us fair warning when something big is about to happen. And believe me, he's speaking very loud right now. If you aren't listening, you will not be ready when God decides to intervene and take home his true believers. Let me ask you this. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, what is your backup plan when he shows up like a thief in the night? Whatever it is, the result will not be good. I don't know how much time you have to procrastinate, but I would not wait another day for we never know what a day will bring. So make that choice today to serve Jesus Christ and feel the comfort that only comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Again, we are living in unprecedented times, and I'm not sure if we're going to get that revival because I don't know how many people on our knees are praying, but I do know that I am personally seeing a lot of promising things that are coming from um, some of today's prophets that I trust. So there is hope. As long as Jesus is on the throne, there's hope. And for those of you that say, there's no hope, it's over, and are sharing just doom and gloom, then you don't know my God. We may be in the end days, and we might be entering that time of tribulation, but only God knows. And like I said, as long as he's on the throne... I will always have hope. So believe what you will. And take this message seriously. If not, you know, then live your life the way you want. Um, but when the time comes, just know that you have been warned. And you will have no excuse when you stand before Jesus Christ at the white throne judgment. So God bless and take care.